<laughs> okay, no, first of all, I just want to say some words before the video. I want to thank you, Victoria and Creative Mornings team for the invitation. Uh, actually, when I first founded Village in the Ground, I invited Creative Mornings to make Creative Mornings in Village and they said no because it only happened in Porto. So three years after, I'm very, very happy to be here talking for them. Uh, in a place where, it's another happy accident, I helped communicate when they launched Second Home and I got really good friends with Ro and the founders and Lucy Crook and all the team here. So it's also a bit of a coincidence that I'm here now. I'm very happy for that. Uh, so my name is Mariana. Um, I'm the mother of three boys and I'm the co-founder of Village Underground Lisboa, which is a co-working space for creative industries uh, inside uh, old shipping containers and double-decker buses in Alcantara. And it's also a um, cultural uh, venue for many kind of events, especially cultural events and parties, raves, and so on. Um, so I'm going to ask you sorry for three, th three things. First of all, I speak English, but my grammar sometimes is terrible. So sorry for that. Um, I'm going to be reading a lot because I have three boys and my brain <laughs> is lost somewhere. I cannot <laughs> memorize two lines. And uh, about synchronization, this is not going to work 100%, but we'll try it. Um, so yeah, so I think now um, we're good for the video. The video is about our uh, third anniversary that happened last week. So this is brand new. I just put it, posted on Facebook yesterday. I hope you like it, and it explains a little bit what we do over there. What? Technology. Technology. I told you. <laughs>
So uh, this is looks like a co-working space, doesn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's more like a, a party space. It's my background is to organize parties, and so I do it a lot in, in, in village. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be happy doing what I do. Uh, so when Victoria invited me, um, I immediately said yes, but I had no clue what the word serendipity was. Uh, I only related it to my favorite movie, uh, with one of my favorite actors, John Cusack. So I, don't, I didn't really know, but I accepted. And then I, uh, as everything I do, I just keep thinking about it every day from when I wake up to when I go to bed, and I don't do anything about it. I just, I just think about it, but I don't do, I don't take any action until the very last 24 hours before the talk. And so I start WhatsApping people like my husband. Um, hey, Gu, what about serendipity? What can I say in a talk? And he replied, like, about what? <laughs> he didn't even know the word. So, okay, I'm, 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 it's not good. So I posted on Facebook, hey, peeps, anyone got any tips about serendipity? Not one comment, not one like. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, so, okay, so London friends, Paul Bay, a guy that I really admire and who I had the pleasure to work in London. Uh, hey, Paul, any tips on serendipity? You're the master of talks, come on, help me out. Um, and he gave me, actually, he gave me some direction, so light. And, uh, and he spoke to me about serendipity is the opposite of predi predictability, which I already knew. <laughs> we get comfortable with routine, so we will condition ourselves not to see the happy accidents when they come along. I get it. We see opportunities where others see problems. We just make connections that others don't. and connections that uh, normal thinking doesn't make so it can uncover wrong assumptions in life. So, okay, so now I know a little bit more serendipity and how will I connect it to Village on the Ground and why is it relevant for me to speak about the subject? Uh, and then Victoria told me one thing, don't worry because you are serendipity. <laughs> and I was very, very confused about it. <laughs> Not me, you were mentioning like Village on the Ground, so okay. Uh, so now I know, um, what the word means, um, and I, I start thinking, so, okay, but why me, and uh, why am I here? Because of serendipity, because my father just got divorced, and he met my mother, who just got a job in, ooh, just got a job, a new job in his building, and then they met in the elevator, they fall in love, and they <laughs> produce me, so <laughs> that's serendipity, right? Yeah. I guess, or destiny, I don't know. This really uh, made me think a lot, and um, I thank you for that, Victoria. Uh, so, and, and another thing that happened in my life uh, that was maybe what changed my life was another fact of serendipity, was that when I was decided to move to London in 2007, I. Uh, London had like many, many, many job offers. This was before the crisis. And I went to 30 job interviews around London that you know is big. Um, it has more than 1,583 square meters. And I ended up in the same street, in a media company, in a very small media company, in the same street as Village in Iran, London. So how come? Serendipity, right? <laughs> I was so lucky. So, um, so here I am, and now I'm gonna explain you how it all started. Okay. Tom Foxcroft, he's the founder of Village in the Ground London. He founded it in 2000, uh, 2006. Um, he, he he comes to to, to Lisbon to to our parties, of course, and to, and to sometimes to work with me. And we, we always take one day to kind of reflect what we're doing and um, not in terms of business, but, but in terms of our own lives and where we want, where we gonna be in the next years and why are we here? And the very first question I made uh, last time was, Tom, I'm very concerned because are we being of service to the world? because we are not actually saving the world, but we are doing something special, I thought. And he replied to me, and I'm quoting him now. 
People are either contributors or extractors. We, <coughs> Tom and I, contribute to the pot, the big communal pot of our society. We put lots into it. And on the other side, there are people with ways of working that extract from our shared social pot. That, that is what we are not. And you only have to stop for a moment to realize how valuable our contribution is. Imagine a world without art, literature, film or music. No dancing, no poetry, no places for shared euphoric experience. No moments of life-changing inspiration. It's not a world that anyone would want to, no world to hand down to our children. And as we are working and contributing to that better, more beautiful world. And so I relaxed a bit and, uh, and uh, I felt I felt good about what we are doing. Um, and now I want to go back to 2007 uh, when I met this guy. So um, I moved to London in 2007, got a job in a media company uh, in Shoreditch. And every day passed this weird scenario of four old tube carriages and thought, what the hell? Mm -hmm. So one day a friend said that she knew the owner and that we should got an office space inside. So I quit my media company job from nine to six and I joined Joanna in a tube carriage uh, and I started producing, my, uh, creating my own uh, music management company called Madame. Um, so the minute we arrived, I got a very strange feeling that somehow that place would change my life. And it did. So I spent 18 months there working. This place I was working was called Village Underground and had opened recently. Doesn't look good, but it is beautiful. You can see the beauty in, the, in here, <laughs> if you can feel it. My office was as cold as being working outdoors, literally. There was no heating and the wind and snow sometimes entered the carriage. At one point I had to buy two heaters and work with gloves and a scarf. My friend just left, she quit. She couldn't handle it, but I kept going. I also bought my office chair from a secondhand shop and carried it with me in the bus, thinking I was moving to the coolest office space ever. And actually I was. So in this tube carriage, while I was working, putting on parties, both in London and Lisbon, and bringing new music talent to, to London. I met Tom, the founder, and the mastermind behind all, of this, behind all of this. So one day I asked him, what if we do Village in the Ground in Lisboa? He thought for a second and he said, let's do it. Uh, then of course he asked me, are you sure? Um, because this is a game changer. This will change your life forever. Do you plan to have kids and get married? And I said, yes, one day. And I said, well, this is, this is a life project. You really have to think about it. And I did it. <laughs> I just said, I, want, I really want to do it. Um, so, while I, I, so I came back to Lisbon in 2009, and I started talking with people, companies. 2009, I don't know if you remember, but Lisbon is, was not exactly what you see today. Lisbon was like very, very closed. No one would talk to you about creativity. No one spoke a word about startups. No one knew what was co-working spaces. And um, someone coming from London wanting to do all of these inside shipping containers and double-decker buses, <laughs> it was not easy. So my first meetings, actually my first three years of trying to make this was, were just very frustrating, knocking at doors. And it, would seem, it, uh, it seemed like I was sometimes talking to doors, not people because they would not even make like a face of good or bad. It was just very, very strange. So three years of struggling that I'm going to skip out because we would need another two, two hours to talk about it. But in the meantime, I got married and I got two babies. I was eight months pregnant with my first child, Lukas, when I got a meeting with the three top executives of Kahish. And I explained I needed their trams to make office spaces and parties for Village in the Ground. And they offered me, they, they gave me. They, that was a breakthrough. So I went out of that meeting in 2010 with three buses in my hand and a big belly. So there I was with a big belly, but no location. 
And when I found the location, I got pregnant for the first, for the second time. So, <laughs> for the third time. No. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. I got pregnant. I got pregnant. Uh, and so did my business partner's wife, uh, Abby. So now we have three buses, one location, one three-year-old baby boy, and another two on the way. So we launched Village Underground 2014. And one year later, I got pregnant again. Yeah, that was it. So he was born a few weeks after the second anniversary. Uh, in November, and in November Tom got his second baby. So we are now a very happy family, um, a very, very and big uh, happy family. So what did I do in order to conciliate everything, having kids, having 14 shipping containers, two double-deckers, and trying to have a life? So I uh, turned Village on the Ground into a playground. <laughs> A playground where Lucas, Nuno, Miguel would have fun while waiting for their parents to work. Um, and so today, besides the co work space and the party space, Villages has, has a skate ramp, a swing, inflatable castles, and face painting workshops. <laughs> On weekends, we also organize big lunches for parents to bring their children and relax in our terrace while they run free and play all together. So another pleasant surprise in my life, um, so serendipity again, was to meet Gustavo, my husband, in 2003. And the best part was that he accepted my marriage proposal. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did propose to him in a club in London. Um, and so he helped me. And this is the moment he said yes, just before he went on the decks because he's a DJ. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, and so we came back to Lisbon and started thinking about all of this and how we're going to make this happen. Um, and he's there for me and for the boys all the time. There is no separation of tasks and we just arranged to, to do it in our very own way, the best we can. And I must say there is, there is a lot of serendipity in our lives right now, as you can imagine, because it's all happy accidents and um, and just going with the flow. So my conclusion here is that life becomes life becomes a journey of serendipity, of uh, discovery, sorry. Uh, and what I am trying to do here and since, uh, since I've been thinking about this and preparing for this talk, I just think I'll, I'll need to accept serendipity as a step to live with a little less of fear. So this is my presentation, and if you <laughs> want to get in touch, I'm in the containers in Alcantara. <laughs> <laughs>